I've done a lot of experimenting with the bubbles made from a mixture of Mod Podge and dish soap. It's an awesome way to add texture and depth to your art pieces. And once you add resin and color, you can really create some cool things like this ocean wine glass. But now I've found an even better way. I was making the textured seafoam bubbles on a piece of silicone, then peeling it off and putting it on the glass. Well, why not try to put the bubbles directly on the glass? And I had to try it. And guess what happened? It frickin' works. It frickin' works. One part dish soap and three parts Mod Podge with a little bit of water mixed in. I have a plastic lid with a hole punched in it and then my straw for blowing. And I'm going to blow in the jar to make the bubbles and then I'm gonna scoop them out with this silicone spoon that I got at the dollar store. And I need to turn my fan off. That does tend to blow the bubbles a little bit more quickly. So at first, this was not working at all. The bubbles just were running all over the place, got really thinned out, and ju I just really was not happy. And then it was really by accident that I think I found a way to keep the bubbles from just completely collapsing. What I did before putting the bubbles down is I painted on with my finger a really thin layer of this uh, Aline's tacky glue. It seems like the tacky glue is giving the bubbles something to hang on to and they're not running all over the place. But what I did, I just smeared it on with my finger, but you could use a paintbrush maybe. One thing I did forget also to add to my my bubble mixture is some colorant so that we can color these bubbles a little bit. I had used liquid resin dye before and I don't know if you can use paint but I'm just going to try putting a little bit of this apple barrel white paint that I have. It's acrylic paint. I'm just going to try adding some because we do want to color the bubbles and you can paint on like after the bubbles are dry I have painted on paint it, and then that works really well but um and it just takes takes a little bit more time so i don't know if this will work i have no idea how much to add so this is an experiment and i'm just gonna eyeball it um i have no idea how much to add so this is probably like two tablespoons i'm not measuring it Ugh. I probably need to wear gloves, but um, I'm not. There we go. I bought silicone mats to try to help me contain my mess, but um, keep forgetting to use it. All right, we're going to do an experiment on two. Okay, this is going to be, we're going to use Mod Podge on one and Aline's Tacky Glue on another. Okay. MP for Mod Podge and PP for Tacky Glue. Mod Podge, I am going to paint on with a little fan brush here. And I want to paint this on where I want my bubbles to be. It's the full needle. So not all the way down to the bottom because um, and I'm just kind of doing a little random miss to the pattern there. Okay, so that's the Mod Podge. Where's my lid? And then Aline's tacky glue. I swear this thing is so thick. So what I'm going to do here is just 
Um, I'm just going to smear it on with the bottle and then I can paint it on. This is so super thick. Right. And now I'm going to go straight in with the, um, the bubbles and see if that will i know it'll work on the tacky glue i'm just not sure on the mod podge so this is an experiment Oops. Okay, here i'm gonna show you on this this tacky glue i'm gonna let me set up a little bit let me check i want it a little level This is the tacky glue side, and it just kind of helps the bubbles stick to the glass. Now they're still running, but I think I had just gotten a really watery piece. They still run, but they're not like running straight off of the really slick glass. Pop those big bubbles. I don't want those. They're going to pop as soon as you put them on the glass anyway. Watch. See how they're they're sticking right here where we have the glue and even along the side let me see if i can show you this but see along the side right here where we have the glue they're not i mean they are running a little bit but they're sticking to that glue so this is what i want this is going to give me that little beachy effect that I want. I just want a little bit more right there. I actually want this one to run a little bit. That is a really good texture on that one. All right, I'm gonna let that one sit and hopefully come back in a little bit. All right, so now the Mod Podge. And I do have my fan off. Normally I have my fan on in my studio, but that will definitely speed up the bubble popping. So we don't want that. Well, I put that one on lopsided. Oh, I think that one is too watery. I don't need to add any more to that one. Maybe a little bit right here. And then right here. All right, so far, I'm really liking the bite that both of these techniques are giving. 
but I think the tacky glue may be a little thicker. It seems like the Mod Podge is allowing the bubbles, wow, to really run off. But I did add a lot. Like, I, I did add a lot. But see, it's still sticking. All right, so what I need to do is I'm just going to set these back down and not stress about it. And then come back in a couple of hours and just, whoops, yeah, that's good. See what we have. All right, these have been drying overnight. And I did peek, peek once, maybe once or twice, just to see how it was going. All right, this is the tacky glue side. And I did add a little bit of the paint. I can see some of the paint on the glue but look how well the bubbles stuck even as they ran over the glass they actually ran exactly where i wanted them and just have a little bit of cleanup but not bad tacky glue side and this is the mod podge side and again they ran a little bit but ran exactly where i needed it to except for you know maybe a little bit on the back i mean i'd say this is success too just giving giving these bubbles a little bit of a bite on the glass it just gives the gives it a little bit something extra to stick on And I'm just kind of smushing them down because I'll be adding resin on top. Now, something I did notice too, um, working with these on my last project, sometimes the bubbles are falling apart when I'm adding resin. Um, which can be a problem they tend to flake off and then that leaves little bumps and ridges elsewhere on your resin I don't know if you can kind of see this right here it's just like a little little bit of the bubble like a like a little flake and this is mainly it seems like it's mainly where where the bubbles really got thinned out um and i'm seeing this on the tacky glue side too so I'm wondering if another thin layer of Mod Podge or glue over the bubbles before the resin might help seal that in or maybe even a little bit of paint might help seal that in. So I think that's the next step I'm going to try. Just use the Mod Podge. So that's what I'm going to do. And that'll, I think this is going to help. Um, just get rid of those little, those little burrs. They're like little hairs. All right, I'm gonna let these dry. I'm gonna let these dry. They'll probably be dry in a couple hours. I'm gonna go ahead and turn my fan on again anyway because I'm done making bubbles. Putting a really light layer of uh, Mod Podge over the bubbles really was a good idea. That's helping to kind of compact them a little bit. I have an idea of putting sand along the very bottom of this but I don't know and the reason I hesitate a little bit um, I've added sand before to wine glasses and it seems to be kind of a hit and miss with people but these are already chunky because of the textured foam so I am taking a, a chance. 
but I think I want to try it. I think that would be kind of cool. And just, um, so I already have some of some sand. This is clean beach sand. And I think I'm just going to use tacky glue. And then I'll go back with some resin. I'm going to take these off a little bit better. But, doesn't work it doesn't work I mean what's the worst that's gonna happen it's gonna get messy I'm not gonna put enough of the tacky glue on there for it to drip onto the waves but let's just see it'll stick that'll work Take your time, thin layers, and I can always go back and add another layer. And I could always dry it this way. Yeah. That way I don't have to worry about the tacky glue kind of seeping into where where the waves are. I am telling you, I literally just thought about this um, as I turned the camera on <laughs> to do the sand. I just have all, I, you know, I've been wanting to try it again. I haven't done sand on glasses in a while and uh, just want to try it. That, this is going to be really pretty. I do want to take off all these bigger pieces, but. I think I'm going to go back. I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back with, um, with I think, another layer. I'm going to leave that. And it's already chunky. All right, I'm going to let this dry. And then, um, and then we'll come back and do the next step. All right. I don't think I want to put another layer of sand on. I think. I think this is fine. I think this will be enough. I just wanted really just a little bit of um, of the sand on there just to give it some contrast and color. I mean, it, it. I wanted these to be, you know, beachy glasses. So you get these on the turner. I just got to thinking I pro I'm only mixing up 10 milliliters per glass, but I'm thinking I should have used more. I should have mixed up more because I think it's going to take a little bit more over, over this foam like I've done in the past. So, you know, if I need to mix more, it's okay. I'll, I'll do that. I'm just going to kind of see how this goes first because I don't want to go all the way to the top. I'm going to, I'm going to stop my resin about right here on this one and about, you know, right there on these or, you know, right where the bubbles are. So, um, yeah, I don't think I mixed enough. Oh, man. That's okay. I'm just going to use, I'm just going to do one at a time. It's all right. I'll mix up some more. So I'll just do one at a time. Um, I just didn't think about the extra that I would need. I guess I am putting extra on the sand and also on the sea foam because I want it to be sealed. I'm not trying to make it smooth. That's not the point of it. It's to seal it in so that there are no 
problems later on. Um, it's not going to be smooth. It is going to be chunky. That was the point of adding the sea foam was for texture. So this is not like um, a glitter tumbler where you feel like you're sanding forever to get it nice and smooth. This is not going to be smooth. So not going to be enough on this one, but I didn't want to put all 20 milliliters on this cup. It just seemed like this one was, that was going to be too much. So that'll be a good thin layer, but I have another plan. So, all right. That's good. Come up with the plan, Stan. I have my silver. I'm going to use silver. The aqua. And the blue that's not the sapphire blue. The aqua, I want to put a thin line, I think, right along the top edge of that blue or the what do you call this oh geez the textured sea foam so the our wave our textured wave thingy and you see how i'm just dragging the tip of the uh, applicator on the resin because i do not want it to be I don't, I'm not dropping the ink on, I'm dragging it, okay? And now, I'm having a hard time, let me see if I can turn this on. Oh, well, that's a big difference. Uh, I'm just going to drag my blue along what I think is the top edge of my resin. And it's probably getting on the glass too, but I can I can definitely clean that up later when these are cured. And you'll be able to tell if it's on the resin or not. And this is kind it's kind of messy at first, but it you can clean it up. And I think that's all. That's all the color I want to do. I love these little dendrites in here. The little fingers. Of, what, dendrites are like those little fingers that seep into the resin. I just love that. Look at it. All right, the silver. I am going to put a little swooshy swoop. Swoosh. I don't want to mess that up. I, I'm just loving that too much. I don't want to mess up my dendrites. Maybe I should do it at the top. Let's do it at the top. Okay, let's do that. All right, and this one too late for this one, but I'm going to go ahead and mix up another, another 20 milliliters. Okay. I think this is going to be fine. This one is still wet, but I'm going to go, just going to go ahead and finish it off. So I'm really hoping that it's not going to mess it up too much and it's not too cured. It doesn't feel like it's too cured. Honestly, that first little layer. It just needs, I just needed a little bit more on here. Okay, same, same thing. I'm going to start with the aqua along the edge of the wave here.
little bit right there. Just trying to get some in this little blank spot here. There we go. And then follow with the blue. And I kind of missed the mark on the blue here a little bit. Um, but it's sort of hard to see where the resin is. So I am squeezing the bottle a little bit, but not as much as you would think. And I'm just waiting for the, the alcohol ink to kind of um, fracture into where this aqua is. That's just really super cool. Add a little bit more there and see what we get. And then the silver, same thing. I'm gonna to try to follow the edge of the resin. I'm just barely squeezing. I'm really not squeezing very much at all. And I just feel like it needs something right there. And maybe a little bit right there. Maybe right there. All right. And the rest, I, I'm, this is what, this is all I'm going to do. I'm just going to let it go. We're going to come back and see, see what happens. All right. This was the perfect amount of resin and sand on the bottom. And it's chunky. I am not gonna lie, it is not smooth, but I am super thrilled. I am so happy. I don't know if you can really see this little wave here. Oh, they're so cute. Just gonna clean these with alcohol, clean the rims. And you wanna do this when you know that alcohol or when the resin is fully cured because it could affect the, um, the resin itself if it's not fully cured. So what I'm doing here is I'm just cleaning the extra alcohol ink off of these tops because I knew I was gonna get a little sloppy with my inks because I wasn't sure where that top line of resin was when I was doing these. So this is just the ink that was left on the glasses. Not, I'm not rubbing them off of the glass itself. So that is what it looks like. And on the bottom too, might be a little, I have to sand that off. So see the difference? So here is where there's a lot of ink, alcohol ink, and I'm just wiping it off so we see where the pretty resin is. should have worn gloves because now I look like a snarf. All right. There are two new glasses for me to put in my art show booth. I'm really glad I took the chance and just tried to put these bubbles directly on the glass. I'm going to see how these do at my at my booth and um i think they'll i think they'll sell i think these are really unusual some people might not like the chunkiness of it because it's it does feel kind of weird on your hand but i don't know it's kind of it, it I mean, I have a, a coffee mug in my pantry that is kind of a 3D mug. It's got some little things on it. Um, in fact, it's a pig. 
it's a pig and it has a little snout and ears and it's kind of cute but you can feel it so i like it let me know what you think in the comments and um let me know if you're going to give this a try i'd love to see a picture all right cheers friends bye